Hello everyone, welcome back to another Gate Ruler video. Now, you know how to play, you know what to play on, and I hope by now you've had some fun with the demo decks that have been released. Uh, I've got a couple, uh, well, a one major update about those demo decks I think you'll all be interested to hear. Uh, and then I want to talk about the real purpose of this video, which is the rulers themselves. So we now know all of the details on the set, well, certainly most of the details on the set three, or set what the three set one rulers. I can talk, I promise. Uh, and so in this video, I'm going to explain them and go over some pros and cons of each. Uh, now, before I get into that, here's the here's the cool thing I figured you'd all want to know. The demo decks are getting some additions on the 3rd of December, uh, presumably at midnight, um, uh, JST, so this will be on the 2nd uh, for the rest of us. Uh, we will be getting nine additional cards added to the demo deck set for additional deck building options, which is really awesome. <coughs> it means we're going to have a lot more variety and hopefully there will be new cards as well, so we'll get a nice bulk of new stuff to experiment with as well. So I hope you're looking forward to that. Not too far away. Uh, I'm, um, the demo decks are a lot of fun, in my opinion, but uh, they are demo decks, so can't expect a great deal of depth from them, so I'm looking forward to doing something else with them. Now that that is out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the ruler. So there are three in the first set. A1 Apprentice, H8 Highlander, H8 Highlander, and K11 Knight. Knight. Uh, and we pretty much know everything um, besides Highlander, where there's a little bit of um, potentially something else we don't know, but I'll touch on that when we get to it. But this is, a, it's certainly more than enough to get a flavor for how these decks are gonna work. So let's get started. And this is the uh, information on A1 Apprentice. Uh, and this has been put together by the team over at Gate Realize, uh, which a link will be in the description. So, let's talk about it. So, if you play Apprentice, you have 12 life, 4 attack, and 3 strike. So, if you have played with the demo decks, you will appreciate that 12 life is a lot. That is, that is a very, very nice amount of life to have. And 4 attack is going to be clearing lots of threats. Uh, now, of course, it is a very feels bad for your 3 strike unit to be clearing... Uh, other stuff, so generally you want to be avoiding that, but in a pinch, uh, it's nice to have the option. Now, um, the effects are game preparation, uh, nothing in particular. So you have no cards in hand and you have no energy. At the start of your turn, you drive two times. So if you're not aware, when you drive, um, you basically take the top two cards of your deck and you hold them and you look at them. They're not considered part of your hand. It's like when you look at the top three cards of your deck to add one or something, it's going to be like that sort of zone. So you just look at them, and then you can activate ODs, you can play them, that sort of stuff. Uh, and the costs of your cards are considered paid always, so you don't have to pay for the level. Uh, you cannot have a hand. Uh, and the deck construction rules. There is a level limit of 50, a counter limit of 16, and a legend limit of 2, and cards from up to 2 factions can be used. So, um... It's, it's, all, it's all very simple on paper, but really a lot of it is going to come down to the deck building and the actual playtesting, because what you have with Apprentice is a great deal of RNG. So the goal of Apprentice is going to be to sort of minimize that RNG uh, as much as you can and consistently have powerful turns. And I think the best way to do that is going to be in the form of big flashy level 3 creatures and events which are going to be doing valuable stuff for you. Here's an example of one of those big flashy level 3 creatures, um, which I think which are, uh, would work very well in this deck, and indeed very well in any OT-based deck. This is Great Leader, Malevolous Prime, is a 4-star unit. Uh, he has a level 3, 5 uh, HP, 3 attack, and 2 strike, so very, very nice stats. And certainly something uh, you wouldn't mind putting in the defensive zone, but is very powerful offensively as well. When another Crime Nauts would be put from the field to the cemetery, put that into this card's soul instead. Sorry, and as the OD, you put two cards of your deck into its soul, so it comes in with two soul. And then it has Deva Speed. This is an immediate timing effect, which means you can use it whenever. Uh, and uh, my understanding is that there is no counter chain limit. So uh, you could uh, chain this to itself and go Deva Speed, Deva Speed, Deva Speed, resolve, resolve, resolve to burn a great deal of damage. 
uh, you put one of your soul at the bottom of your deck and you choose one enemy unit and deal two damage to it. And this cannot get soul guard. So that's to avoid this being a ridiculous beefy beast that cannot be uh, broken through. Um, makes sense. You don't want to make something anywhere near that defensively tanky in set one. But this is a very, very powerful card. And it's going to be one that provides a nice amount of removal, has strong defensive capabilities with 5 HP, solid offensive capabilities with 2 strike, and it potential to do a lot of uh, attack damage, of course, if you are using your burn. But I think its best use is going to be slapped in the defensive zone, where you're going to, uh, you're going to want to find ways to uh, fuel its soul. Um, but even if you can't, I think it's going to be very, very valuable because you're just going to be able to, on your opponent's turn, when they're trying to do stuff, you can just snipe their units away, which is going to be really good. And you can call this to the attack zone if you want to de-incentivize your, de your opponent from attacking it, um, which is, of course, another very solid option. But it's worth saying that this is, you know, 5 HP. It's nothing to sniff at. They're probably going to have to commit a good amount to it. And you may end up making their entire turn null and void if you're able to remove one of their attackers, um, which means that they are literally only able to remove this unit, which would be a phenomenal amount of value. So uh, that's enough on this particular card. Next, let's talk about Knight. So Knight here has 11 life, three attack and three strike. So significantly the worse stats, um, not significantly, but worse stats. Uh, and it's game preparation. You start with two cards in hand and three cards in your energy, all untapped. At the start of your turn, you choose two of your energy and, and activate them and draw two. Uh, as And the rule is summon right two, so you can normal summon twice per turn. And the deck building uh, restrictions are exactly the same as for Apprentice, but without the level limit. So ignore the level limit, that is not there, everything else is the same. So um, this is, a, this is a very powerful in a different way. What you're getting with this ruler is you're trading off um, you're trading off the ability to just play cards for free for two things. One, the ability to gain card advantage and to have explosive turns. One of the things that's worth saying about Apprentice is you are always going to be getting two cards per turn. No more, no less. Now, if your opponent is able to uh, deal with your threats and also build up their own advantage, you will always lose as the Apprentice player because you will just get further and further and further behind. Conversely, as the Apprentice player, if you're always able to, you know, sort of maintain at least one thing on board or keep your opponent at the zero state as well, eventually over time you should come out on top due to your increased life total and the fact that you are always playing generally, you would hope, good stuff because you've deck built around it. So here's an example of a powerful card in the Knight deck, and this is Star Songs. This is a cost two to just draw two. And uh, this is just an example of something that, uh, to, to sort of hammer home that point that Apprentice is simply unable to do. The ability to generate hand advantage is going to be very, very powerful for Knight. To give you options, to give you lots of cards to play, there are lots of free zero cost events. There are some events you're going to be seeing over the next few weeks that are very, very potent um, and cost zero, uh, but that are really only, uh, that, that, that are, that are events you would rather be playing in in Apprentice because in or rather the cards you would rather be playing in Knight because in Apprentice you want to be playing those higher cost things to really get as much value of play, out of playing them for free as possible. So I just uh, want you to sort of keep that in mind. Do not underestimate um, Knight because if you if you've played the demo deck it really it's very it feels very much like Apprentice is stronger and I think it is but um, the you know once you add in proper deck building options things are going to change significantly finally we have highlander and uh, this is actually identical to apprentice in every single way besides two the first is the legend limit is three and do not sleep on the importance of one more additional legend the legend cards are phenomenally powerful so far, only one of them, I believe, has been revealed publicly, and that is Magvarius. But let me tell you, you'll be seeing more of them over the coming weeks as we approach the release. Every single one is a terrifying powerhouse of a card. You do not want to sleep on these Legend cards, and getting access to one more is game-changing. Now, of course, one of the trade-offs for that is only one copy of each card can be played, and on the surface of it, 
I would say that this uh, that one additional legend is not a good enough reason to play this over Apprentice. However, um, uh, even even if uh, you do get access, you do gain access to three factions, which is obviously very nice. But your card limits are being drastically reduced, so you're less able to abuse the powerful cards in those factions. Now, obviously, this is uh, a deck that a ruler that will get much better as time goes on. This has the strongest scaling potential out of any ruler so far. However, one thing to keep in mind, as Ikeda has stated, that you will get some sort of buff for playing Highlander, so it is my belief that there is something to the picture that we are still missing, so uh, don't get too excited just yet about Highlander sucking if you don't enjoy it, um, there is still time. Uh, he has stated that uh, it is very much possible to build a tier 1 contender, competitively viable contender deck from set 1 for Highlander, um, so don't sleep on it. And that is it. That is... Oh, no, it's not. Here's an example card that is so good for Highlander, and of course it's exactly the same for Apprentice. Um, so worth saying that, Mag uh, that uh, Malevolous Prime is also fantastic in uh, Highlander. But here we have Sudden Wormhole. And the effect timing is open card, so the second you get this card you have to play it. Um, and you just... Uh, you Raigeki. So... Um, yeah, uh, a free Raigeki is obviously ridiculously powerful and is exactly the sort of thing that you want to be running in Highlander and you'd want to hope for many, many, many of these tools that you can all just chuck together. Um, yeah, obviously that le that level limit is something to keep in mind. Um, that does suck a bit, but there are ways to get around that. Um, there's a card called Haunting, which uh, has been revealed. You can go and have a look at that on Gate Realize, but it has a minus five level. So that is something that's going to increase your ability to deck build. Personally, I'm a really big fan of this level limit um, as a mechanic. I think it adds a lot to deck building. Um, it really forces you to make tough choices. And it's going to also do a good amount to prevent just degeneracy, like right out the gate. Um, this is something that you can, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, this is going to be something that you, you really have to keep in mind as you are deck building. So that really is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please leave a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel for more Gate Roller content uh, as we're coming over the coming weeks. Uh, and yeah, uh, sub to the channel, leave a comment with your thoughts on which ruler you're going to play. I'm legitimately interested. Which ruler are you most excited for? Um, and Discord is linked in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.